Okay, as I'm here, I'm being asked to, to, to do my paper. This one will follow. Um, thank you. Um, this paper that I am now presenting um, relates to a, a study that we undertook recently for the National Department of Social Development in South Africa. Um, it was completed earlier this year and presented to members of Department of Social Development, South African Social Security Agency, National Treasury and Finance and Fiscal Commission. But other than that presentation that took place, this is its second airing in, in, um, in public. And um, we have special permission to present it here today. Our task for the study was not to explore rationales for universalizing, um, introducing a universal child benefit, but rather to look at the nuts of, and bolts using a tax benefit micro simulation model to explore um, the ways of delivering and financing a, a universal child benefit. I'll say a little about what the current child support grant is and why there's interest in it becoming universal. And um, the two main options that there are for delivering a universal child benefit. Then um, take you through the process that we underwent in simulating the current grant, the cost of a universal benefit instead of the current means tested grant, and the options for financing it. The child support grant um, is um, a form of social assistance paid to primary caregivers aged 16 and over and subject to a means test of the caregiver and their spouse if they have one. It's paid for dependent children under the age of 18 who are not in receipt of either the foster child grant or care dependency grant for um, children in need of full-time care. In 2016, it was payable at 350 rands per child per month. There's no limit on the number of biological children who can receive it, but a limit of six of non-biological children. And there's a so-called soft conditionality requiring school attendance. A means test is set simply at 10 times the value of the grant. Now, why is there an interest in universalizing it? Well, 80% um, of all children in South Africa are currently eligible for the grant. And, um, Yet, about a fifth of those eligible children don't receive it. The means test in numerous studies has been shown to impede take-up of the child support grant. Um, it's an onerous process to demonstrate one's income status, even if one has an income, but even more onerous often if one doesn't. Um, there are financial and time demands on the applicant, cultural barriers to early application, the application process itself can be stressful and erosive of dignity, and the means-tested element promotes stigma and a pejorative attitude towards recipients. And the goal um, amongst those interested in the universal child benefit is to move from the CSG as being emblematic of poverty to becoming a child benefit that's a social right of citizenship and an expression of social solidarity. So whilst it might seem very straightforward to consider a universal child benefit, there are numerous elements that had to be taken into account, such as the extent to which it would be compatible with the South African constitution, compatibility with institutional mandates, in particular the South African Social Security Agency and the South African Revenue Service, how we actually define universal, as there are in fact lots of different ways, um, the conditions of entitlement, the age criteria of the child, whether or not we implement the cap still for non-biological children, citizenship status, how it intersects with the other grants, the amount, and who the applicant would be, and route on and off of the, of the benefit system. Just on two of those, we simply defined universal for our purposes as meaning that the child benefit is payable for each child in South Africa, irrespective of the income status of the child, their caregivers, and any present or absent parents or any other person in the household. So it's simply the stripping away of the means test of the current child support grant. In terms of the intersection with other child grants, as it is becoming universal, it means it can no longer be um, impossible to claim it as well as the more um, 
generously paid foster child grant or care dependency grant. So what we did was to assign a universal child benefit to each child and then top up that amount to the equivalent of what the foster child grant is, what the care dependency grant is, or for the small number of children who are both disabled and fostered, they're entitled to both of those two well-paid grants. So it had a bit of a ripple effect um, in terms of simulating it. Regarding the delivery options, the two main options available are, um, on the one hand, to um, um, implement it as a cash payment through DSD, through SASA, um, by simply stripping away the means test. The other option would be to introduce it as a tax re rebate through the South African Revenue Service. And indeed, there did used to be one, which, um, which was um, removed a few years ago. Um, there are also possibilities of having both scenarios, so that would be extremely expensive and, and um, un unnecessary. But in Germany, for example, one can choose to go either through the benefit system or the tax system to obtain the child benefit. Our priority was to focus on simplicity, accessibility, especially for poor people and speed. And so um, on balance, given that um, um, SASA already has um, the, the records of um, two thirds of the children in, in the country already, um, we recommended that the universal child benefit should continue to be delivered through DSD rather than as a child um, tax rebate. There's intuitive institutional and legislative appeal in returning the, retaining the delivery within DSD. It has the mandate to address poverty through the social security system, simply involves removing the means test, and the mode of delivery is already in place with an extensive network and footprint across South Africa to deliver the grants. Our um, remit was to explore financing options using personal income tax um, as a potential um, source of income for financing the additional cost of a universal child benefit. And there are numerous ways in which that can be done, including increasing tax rates, restructuring bans, decreasing the minimum th tax threshold, though that would be a real uh, no, no. Um, reducing tax rebates, which couldn't really be considered because they already um, have been in to, to contribute to the new national health insurance. Fiscal drag, ideas around hypothecated taxes, and also decisions about whether to tax this new benefit or not. At the moment, it is excluded from the definition of taxable income. It's a very powerful way of testing out financing options, and in, as in the Mary's um, report, um, the direct taxes and benefits um, um, are the key part of the system for achieving the redistribution that society desires. So we had um, a, a free reign to explore different options. The current tax system has six um, at the head at the time six tax bands with um, primary, secondary, and tertiary rebates. Uh, sort of age lengths. And um, we were able to use um, the tax benefits model, SA mod, um, to try out various options. First of all, to implement it and then to look at ways of raising costs. Um, and the version of SA mod that we used um, is one that's been, uh, it's been developed over the past decade has most recently been updated as part of, the, of this South Mod program and is underpinned by the Euromod software that has been developed by Professor Holly Sutherland and colleagues at the University of Essex. Um, and which um, the version that we used for this study was underpinned by the National Income Dynamics Study Wave 4. Um, the policies that we simulate within SA Mod uh, those um, different benefits and also personal income tax. With the NIDS version, we don't simulate the indirect taxes, but we do with another version that uses the living condition survey. So simulating the current system um, and um, 
with a situation of full take-up, uh, we estimated that that would cost 72 billion rands a year to um, pay the child-related grants. That's child support grants, foster child grants, and care dependency grants. This is 12 billion more than was um, as, um, assigned in DSD's budget. Um, and is important because when thinking about universalizing the grant, if it was going to all those who were eligible, then already four out of five of the children would be um, receiving it. And in terms of identifying the amount of cost that you need to recoup, you need to um, identify and be explicit about whether you're looking at the additional cost if there was already full take up or the cost from the um, current status quo of, of non-full take-up. And um, based on our estimates, if you move from full take-up to a universal benefit, it um, costs a further 15 billion, or a little less if it's made taxable. Um, but moving from non-full take-up, so the current status quo, up to full take-up of the child's benefits is 27 billion or a little bit less than that if it's taxed. We explored um, many different um, possible ways of quickly recouping the money through the personal income tax um, schedule. Um, the examples which um, you can um, see in the accompanying paper of some less progressive um, Approaches that sort of attack the teacher of the bands through to middle ways um, that um, squeeze the higher end of the distribution harder, and then more progressive um, ways um, where we add an additional tax band for the higher service, which in fact was subsequently done um, by the Minister of Finance um, after the study for another purpose. And, um, Increasing the tax rates in a, in a different way um, and to make the child's benefit taxable. A host of different possible funding scenarios and the grey, one shaded in grey, um, all raised enough um, to finance the extra cost of a universal child benefit starting from a point of full take up. But the key challenge is that none of those scenarios would um, finance it in full. Uh, starting with the current position of partial take-up. And so we resorted to using fiscal drag as, as a way of um, bringing in large amounts of, of revenue very quickly. A quick cautionary note on the, the tinkering with band one. These are the group who are, we, we, we identified in our data set that 57% of taxpayers fall and squarely and, it's, and solely within the, the bottom tax band. And so any um, uh, adjustment to that first tax band would disproportionately impact on, on low income tax care and would be less progressive. So we tried to avoid that going forward. In order to implement fiscal drag, we created a hypothetical system for 2017. Um, Inflated everything by 5%, which meant we had to raise even more um, revenue, and 19 billion from a position of full take up or 31 billion from partial take up. And there are a string of different scenarios that, that we um, implemented. So, for example, the final one is a year of fiscal drag of salaries and other incomes inflated at 5%, tax specials increased by only 2%. Personal rebates increased increase by only 1%, including the new child benefit taxable income, increasing the tax rate by 2 percentage points of band 6, introducing a new band 7, um, and um, the million basically 45% tax for as above the million round threshold. So um, it's an example of the flexibility of, of the model, really, to explore a host of, of different possibilities. And this um, ruthless set of policies generated the income that we needed in just the one year. 
Um, this chart shows um, two um, different systems. The, the dark green colour um, is child-related benefits as a percentage of disposable income in 2016 with partial take-up. And the, the lighter green is the situation with a universal child benefit and the implementation of our heavy duty fiscal drag. So it changes the, um, the, the picture, but not as, quite as much as one might imagine hearing the, the policy um, um, things that we did. We were confronted with a stark fact that um, we only need to look at the first three rows of the first column here, that um, poverty, whilst it, it reduces um, um, from a position of partial take-up to full take-up, there's no additional advantage in terms of poverty alleviation of implementing a universal child benefit, and the same is found in relation to child poverty results. But the key fact is that that's an artificial um, comparison because full take-up, um, one of the main impediments to achieving full take-up is actually the means test in the first place. So just to conclude, and thank you for bearing with me, um, there are many ways in which um, income can be raised to, find enough, to, to fund and finance the universal child benefit. If it is to be um, personal income tax, the financing mechanisms would need to be clearly articulated and justified using principle of fairness, and there would need to be extensive consultation. Um, we could retain SATA as a delivery organisation as they are already well connected with the whole population, but continue to have the